Hello again from my front porch. Well, coming up here, we have uh, the first of what promises to be three presidential debates between the leading candidates from the two major political parties. Uh, and I am, uh, you know, I always, I, I try not to be political in this program and I try not to make political commentary, uh, but every once in a while I, I will. And in this particular case, uh, it's not because I'm trying to weigh in on a preference in this particular election, because honestly, I'm not overly thrilled with the options <laughs> presented uh, by either side. And I'm, that's, you know, the, there are reasons for that. Um, but with this debate coming up, there is, there is a, a, a talking point that I keep seeing presented. Uh, and uh, to some degree, it, it, it's a spin and a deflection for at least one of the candidates, maybe both, um, but it's, it's troubling to me, um, not only because of my observing as a, as a voter and as a journalist and as someone who pays attention to things, but also because of some personal experience that I've had with the topic in question. Uh, and what I'm getting at is the topic of age. Yeah, yeah, I know age, I'm, I'm getting older, yes, yes. Uh, but that's not, where, <laughs> that's not what I mean. Um, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, President Biden's uh, condition, his abilities. And I will tell you flat out, and this is not a political statement, I believe that Joe Biden has dementia. And you cannot convince me otherwise. And the reason that I say that is because I have had personal direct experience with loved ones to individuals who have battled with that uh, issue. And uh, it, 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 it is unmistakable what it does to someone and how they act and how they behave. I believe Joe Biden's handlers are doing their very best to hide that, to cover it. But I, I see it. I, I see it with my, with my own eyes in, in the news coverage, what little bit there is. He, is. he has done fewer press conferences than almost any modern age president. Uh, he is incredibly distant from reporters. And of course, there's all those uh, examples. It's not even just rumor in you into it. It's actual little literal proof found of where his interactions with reporters have been highly scripted, where he's got notes, sometimes even pictures, uh, the, and the order to call people. It's these are the kind of things that you do with someone who has dementia, where you have to finally script everything. Uh, I remember my, my ex-wife's dad, uh, he had dementia before, uh, you know, at the, at the end of his life that he, he was living in the VA home in Marshalltown. Uh, it did eventually sadly turn into Alzheimer's and that in the, he, he spent his last days in the Alzheimer wing uh, of the VA where they took excellent care of him. They were, they were beautiful, wonderful people. And I applaud them. That's a difficult, uh, uh scenario to be in. And, uh, uh, there was a point where, uh, they were literally using, in order to help guide him to take his medications, to eat his food, they had a three ring binder with photos in it of him and his daughter, my, my ex, uh, with, with captions in big letters saying, Claudia wants you to eat your food. Claudia wants you to take your medication. And when he would get cantankerous and, and uncooperative, they would literally resort to the book with the pictures to the, with the say, now Doyle, remember this. And, and then he would be like, Oh, okay. And he would go. and, and as silly and as absurd as that sounds, it was effective. It worked because of what was going on with, with his brain, with, with his memories and with his cognitive thinking abilities. And I mean, I could, I could cite many, many such examples of direct interaction. And I see Joe Biden exhibiting those over and over and over. Well, the reason that's come up is because his, his defenders want us to not talk about his mental abilities. Don't want us to talk about his cognitive skill. They want us 
they want it to be a discussion about age because yes, he's 81, but Donald Trump is 78. And therefore, there's only three years difference between them. And so, you know, if we're going to talk about age, oh, let's talk about age. You know, let's talk about Trump's age. And, you know, and it's, it's just wrong to be focusing on age. You know, it's all this kind of that, That's the way they want to frame the discussion. And I don't like that. I don't like that. And it's not because, well, I don't like Joe Biden. I don't like the Democrats. No, no, that's, that's not it. It's because I am literally concerned that the president of the United States is not in complete control of his mental faculties. Now, this is not a unique or brand new thing. I remember back in the 80s, 1984, when Ronald Reagan was running for re-election. And at the time, he was what? Um, I think he was only 71. But he was, I think, the oldest president running at that time. He was running for re-election. And so, so Donald Trump currently is 78. At the time, Reagan was 71. So younger than either of the, of the, the contenders right now. Reagan was facing Walter Mondale, who had been Jimmy Carter's vice president. And they were facing him, and Mondale was quite a bit younger than, than Reagan at that point. And age was a topic that was brought up then. But there's a really famous clip uh, uh, from, from the, the Reagan, one of the Reagan-Mondale debates in which this topic of age was brought up. And, and uh, I want to insert this clip here because I, I, I want you to see this. Now, and I will say, that it ends on a, on, a, on a humorous note because Reagan was a master communicator uh, and, and he was able to, to spin this around. Now, whether he came up with it on his own or, or somebody and his team came up with it and he just expertly delivered it, that I don't know. But he did expertly deliver it. He nailed the landing and he completely spun that issue around. But, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, but watch this clip uh, of, of Reagan being asked the question about, now remember, at the time, he's only 71 years old. He's not 81 like Joe Biden is now. He's 71 years old. And it's a question being posed to him about age and his fitness to serve in the office. Just, just observe. You already are the oldest president in history, and some of your staff say you were tired after your most recent encounter with Mr. Mr. Uh, Mondale. Um, I recall yet that President Kennedy had to go for days on end with very little sleep during the Cuba Missile Crisis. Is there any doubt in your mind that you would be able to function in such circumstances? Not at all, Mr. Truitt, and I, and I want you to know that also I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes, my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> okay, so now, again, admittedly, I love, I love Reagan's line. I love the way that he deals with that, you know, that the way he turns it around to say, you know, you know, it's not about me being older, it's about my opponent being more, being younger and less experienced. You know, that's, that's a good spin. That's a good job, Reagan. That's a good, Good way to turn around. And Joe Biden really honestly could do the, the, very much the same thing. Because, yeah, Donald Trump has been president, so, so he does have that experience. But Joe Biden, I mean, let's be honest, Joe Biden has been in office forever. Uh, I mean, what, 50-some years uh, all total? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, this, uh, he, he, is, he has had his fingers in a lot of different stuff. Now, granted, he's changed his positions on a lot of stuff, too. Uh, but, you know, people say, well, people evolve over time. Okay, I'll... Grant, I'll give you that. But but the point being, Joe Biden on paper, a political resume, man, this guy, this guy's done it all. And so if anybody was able to use the Reagan line, it, it, now Joe Biden certainly could use that against someone like Donald Trump, who really his only political experience was the four years he served as president of the United States, oddly and odd as that sounds. Um, but But again, Here's, here's the, 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 real, the, the real emphasis of this. It's, in this case, it's not about age. And, and, and the question of Reagan really wasn't about age, but it was more about stamina, you know, because as, as the, the, the moderator asked, framed it in the context of things that John F. Kennedy had had to do. Now, Kennedy, of course, was a very young and youthful president. Uh, and so they were talking about, you know, some of the hours that he had to keep and sleepless nights. And, you know, 
Now, Reagan, here you are, the at that point, the oldest person to be running for this office. And, um, you know, will you be able to do the job at 71 years old? And you heard his answer, but it was a legitimate question. Well, that same question, it's not about an, a number on the calendar. Because I mean, let's be honest. Uh, William Shatner is currently in his early 90s. And that man, that man is so sharp. He's so on. There are other, there, there are individuals who are, who are in the same age brackets as both Trump and uh, Biden. Uh, individuals like what? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of um, Harrison Ford, of uh, Mick Jagger, of um, and drawn blank. Uh, there, there, there are a whole bunch, whole bunch of individuals of, of celebrities who are, who are of that age bracket, uh, and, and they're still sharp as attack. They're still out there doing things and speaking. To, so age is not a defining element of how mentally acute you are or what your capabilities might be. However, as I said leading into this, President Biden demonstrates in his actions and his words and, and just his demeanor that he has dementia. Uh, again, I, I I, I don't care what any of his uh, supporters say. I, I can see it. I've seen people with dementia up close and personal on a very regular basis. And I can I, I, I see it in Joe Biden. Absolutely. Now, does Donald Trump have dementia as well? That's a question that comes up. In fact, the, 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 uh, the, the proponents of, of Biden want to distract us from looking at Biden and instead they want to zero in on specific little things where where Trump has missteps and say see he's the one that's mentally unstable maybe he is I, I I'm not saying he's not, I'm not I'm not defending Trump in any stretch of the form um, I, I think there is there is always some argument that when you get to that age well you get a little forgetful you get a little confused you know that that that, may, that in and of itself may be uh, a reason to for there to be some consideration on an age ceiling to serve as president of the United States. Not because you can't do the job after a certain level, but just because you may not be able to do it as effectively after a certain age level. Um, but still, you know, that, that's a whole different topic. For right now, uh, what I'm trying to address is this concept that well, you know, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are roughly the same age. And so if you're going to criticize Joe Biden for how he is, you got to criticize Donald Trump too, because he's about the same age. But as Indiana Jones said, it's not the years, it's the mileage. And that probably is, is the, the golden nugget here. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, yeah, he's only three years older than Donald Trump, but he is clearly not mentally acute. It'll be interesting to see what happens in this debate. A lot of people are saying, oh, you know, they should be tested for drugs. Oh, I'll bet Joe Biden will be on drugs. Oh, I'm sure they're both on drugs. Uh, you don't live to be that age and not be taking medications. I'm, I, I'm 20 years younger than, than either of them, and I take regular medications, so I'm on drugs technically. But of course, the, 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 the point being made there is, well, Joe Biden, he's going to be on some sort of performance enhancing drugs, some sort of, of, of drug cocktail to help give him clarity of mind so that he can stand there for 90 minutes and hold his own without the dementia shining through. And that is possible. There are drugs, there are things that can be done. And in a, in a, in a, in a controlled environment, in an, ice, in an isolated specific period of time, it is very possible for someone with dementia to perform well. I think back in my father-in-law, again, uh, I think back, uh, there was a day we went up to visit him and he was he was not having a good day at all. He was very much out, very argumentative, very cranky, which happens with dementia uh, individuals. And um, uh, we said, we want to take him down to play some pool in the main area of the VA hospital. They had a, an activity room, with lots of pool tables and other stuff. And he's like, I don't want to run. We didn't give him a choice. We said, well, get in this wheelchair where you're taking. Arr. So we go down there and it's my ex and our two kids, Ashley and Alex. The, so the four of us are now down there uh, and there's nobody else in, in, in the place. It's just the four of us. And we, we get down there. He's still cantankerous. And we hand him a pool cue. He's sitting in his, in his wheelchair and he's, he's holding the cue and he's And then we put the balls in the, in the triangle on the table. And I ask my son, I take the triangle off and I ask my son 
to go ahead and break the, 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 the set of balls and, you know, start the game. And he does that. And is, you know, and if you, if you play pool or been around pool, you know that there is a very distinctive sound of that cue ball hitting the first ball in the triangle and sending the rest of them scattering. As soon as the sound of the cue hit, hitting the cue ball was made and it connected with the others, it was like the lights went on in Doyle's eyes. He was sitting in a wheelchair, still holding his cue, and he heard those sounds and it registered. And something, the switch got flipped, the lights came on, and he leaned forward a little bit and started watching. And then we said, uh, you know, Alex, he had a ball. And we said, so Doyle, do you want to make it in here? So oh, I, 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 and he, he had got up and he was a little, little stumbly at first, but that went away really quick. And before too long, this man in his 80s with dementia, pretty advanced dementia at that point, he proceeded to clear that table, making intricate bank shots and, and you know, looking and doing the, the, the geometry in his brain to be able to figure out the bank shot to get it in there and all that stuff. He, we, I don't know, we played, I think, three rounds and he won all of them. He cleaned our clocks because when he was young, he used to be quite the pool shark. He used to be quite the pool player. That's, that's, that's what we knew. Well, all of a sudden he was in this context where those memories and those skills Bam! They came right back to the surface, and there was no sign of dementia in him during the entire time that we were there playing that game. And then even after we were done, and you know, he's saying he's maybe a little tired, so we put him in the wheelchair, take him back upstairs, and we had great conversation after that too because he was firing. He was doing great. Now, shortly after that, he slumped, you know, and that went away. But there was that window of time where he had the right trigger. Now, it wasn't because he was drugged and medicated to be able to do that, but it was possible. So, so, so that I've seen that happen, uh, and I don't have any question or doubt whatsoever that during the debate, Joe Biden is going to be probably the best he's ever been in, in, since he was uh, elected, uh, and so maybe even before, uh, that they are working diligently to make sure that he is, he is able to do that task. Um, but but uh, it, it, the question still is not age. The question is not the age. Although if it is a question of age, seriously, we should go back to that whole, should we put a ceiling on how old? We, you have to be at least 35 years old to be elected president. Well, maybe there's a top age that needs to be established too, that we say, uh, you know, I mean, you, you can still be of value to the nation, just not in this office. No, that's, that's, that's just not gonna happen. Um, but, that's not the case right now. And right now it, it appears that our choice between the two major parties, I think there are other candidates on the ballot, just saying, but in the, between the two major parties, uh, it's a 78 year old man or an 81 year old man. And at least one of them, in my opinion, I'm not a doctor, but I have been around dementia patients. And in fact, my mom was a nurse's aide in a nursing home for 40 some years. And I spent a lot of time when I was, when I was younger going up and hanging up there because those people, they loved having me show up because a lot of them got just dumped there by their loved ones. Very, very sad that they would get checked into the nursing home and then nobody ever comes to visit them. So young, young kid shows up and, you know, wants to be, and, and oh man, they, they just loved having me there. They loved telling their stories of doing so. And I, I, you know, liked hanging out with them. My, you know, my mom had rubbed off on me. Um, but there were people with dementia there that at first it scared and confused me. My mom would explain what was going on and I would understand that. And so then, you know, saw that a lot as well. And I will, again, I, 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 I really wish it was not that way. I, I, I feel, I don't, I, I don't feel hostility towards Joe Biden. I feel sadness that uh, people around him are subjecting him to this. Uh, he should not be running for reelection. Uh, that, uh, that, that he's, he's, he is literally being used as a human puppet. Uh, that, I mean, he's, he's, he's out there saying only what he's scripted to say. And when he goes off script, it's horrible. I mean, he, he, he's, he makes up stuff. He lies about stuff. He rambles on incoherently. Uh, it's just, it, it, it is, it is horrible. You say, well, Donald Trump does the same thing. Yeah. yeah you know, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you, but it is nowhere near as bad. It is nowhere near as bad with Trump. In Trump's case, he's just a blowhard. He just likes to hear his own voice. 
in Biden's case, I don't think he even knows where he is most of the time or what's going on without handlers guiding him through that. And that is not the condition a president of the United States should be in. And I wish the two major parties were a little less focused on holding on to the White House and a little more focused on making sure that the individuals that are being put up by the party are individuals who can actually do the job. Because I, I question our choices this time around, at least on the two major parties. But I guess we'll see where the dust settles. So again, um, uh, the watch, let's watch the debate. Let's see what happens. But I, <sighs> age is not the issue. Uh, and the opponent's youth and inexperience might be the issue, but only if the older one actually is mentally competent to make use of their own personal experience. And I don't believe Joe Biden is in that position any longer. Well, there you go. That's probably the most political sounding one of these episodes that I've ever done. And that is not me endorsing one of those candidates. I hope you get that message. It is me expressing my concern about the individual who is gonna be the next leader of the free world, whether they actually are in control of themselves, let alone the nation. With that, I'll see you all next time from my front porch.